Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and today I have another hat video for you. Uh, this isn't really on a tactical hat, at least in these regards. These aren't really field headgear anymore, but they started out initially as field headgear. And what you see here in front of you is two French kepis. Now, the kepi is uh, a French term that is hybridized from an older term basically meaning cap. Um, the genesis of the French kepi happened in 1930 when a kind of softer, lighter hat was introduced for foreign troops to wear rather than wearing the, the shako. Now, the shako uh, basically was in the same regards a pickle haub. For those of you who know what a pickle haub is, it's a, it's a cloth-covered leather hat designed to protect your head from saber blows and stuff like that from from cavalry it's the same thing but slightly different shape and whatnot um if you want to see what one of those looks like please google it um a lot of armies wore shakos for a long time but the genesis of the french kepi kind of started in 1830s and it was kind of tweaked but it was not mass adopted until by the French army anyways until around World War One, and it was never mass adopted by any other branch other than the French army so <clears throat> the kepi started initially though not in this weird coffee can shape uh, it would have started in what you more see in the uh, American Civil War um, it would have had a more kind of square bill on it rather than these crescent shaped bills kind of rounder ones It would have had a it would have had kind of a square bill and it wouldn't have been rigid on the sides It would have only been kind of rigid on the top So and it would have been angled slightly forward so the top of the hat would have been visible from the front so but this uh, has kind of evolved into more of a uh, either during the very late stages of World War One or just after World War One, these these kind of became standard kind of in the post-war era, these coffee can style kepis, and they remain until this day as part of the French uniform um, with different colors and different um, banding and um, designs to denote rank and uh, branch of service. So I have two of you here, and these are actually both medical kepis uh, of the French army. So this one is, uh, there's the inside there. Uh, this one is a pharmaceutical core kepi. So it's green and it has the red top. Uh, this would have been a, uh, a Sioux lieutenant, which would have been like a junior lieutenant, um, which would be like in the U.S. military's equivalent, a second lieutenant or a junior lieutenant in a lot of other armies. Um, Basically, the lowest officer grade rank would have been this. This was uh, for a junior lieutenant in the pharmaceutical corps. And this one would have been for a junior lieutenant in um, the actual medical corps. So this would have been for like a medic. He would wear this maroon colored uh, with the crimson top. And it has the same uh, designation because it has just the cross and only one ring. And then there's only one ring around the edge of the hat too so as you go up in rank there would be more rings added here and the design on the top would get more and more elaborate as you would get closer to general um, another way to tell uh, what branch of service they are as you can see there there's the medical symbol so it has the staff in it um, same thing with this one medical logo with the staff in it, although slightly different because um, these are made in different eras. These are made about 10 years apart. One of them was made in the 50s and the other one here was made in the 60s. So uh, they're made out of this kind of velvety material. Uh, the early ones would have been made out of wool and um, a lot of times you see them, uh, especially in foreign service uh, with the Foreign Legion, they have this kind of white cotton cover over them. Uh, and in World War I, they would have all been horizon blue eventually, but they would have initially started out in the early stages of World War I uh, in traditional French crimson red and iron blue colors, uh, which was the very, very early World War I style colors for the French army. Um, this is a pretty well-known hat. It's actually very, very iconic. You see uh, President Charles de Gaulle wearing these, who was... Um, not only a general during World War II in France, he was also in World War I and later became field marshal and then eventually president of France. So he uh, 
has kind of mixed imagery with the French people. So really well liked in his early career, not like so much towards the end of his career, but this is a very uh, iconic French hat and was very heavily influenced on other hats, as you could tell by the fact that the both sides of the American Civil War adopted the kepi. Um, a lot of countries had some form of other hat much like the kepi. Um, whether they are based off of the other ones or not, I'd have to read into, but nobody really adopted the kepi in this form outside of France or their colonies, this big kind of coffee can style shape, this rigid version of the kepi. Um, and I really hope France never gets rid of these because they are a very iconic, awesome piece of uh, headgear. These are my two really nice ones. I have some older ones. These aren't exactly my, um, the units or anything that I really, really like. I really, I really, really like French mountain troops, but I do not, unfortunately, have a French uh, chasseur kepi. I would very, very much like one. If any of my French subscribers do uh, know where to get one that is in size 58, I would be more than happy to buy one of those from you. Um, super, super nice, these hats are. If you get the chance to get one, um, they're a really interesting piece of collection for not only military history, but for hat collectors as well, because these are a very, very unique design. Um, as you see here, this one has uh, been seen better days with its leather sweatband, and there's been some kind of mothing uh, of the silk lining there around the edge. So, excellent, excellent piece of piece of gear though this one's in really really good condition so uh both of these are actually for sale though if you guys are interested um if you're looking for a french kepi this one's in size 56 to 57 and this one's in size 58 so they both uh fit me and i have a size you know 57 to 58 size head so um, if you're looking for an interesting hat for your collection, this would be a good place to go. I'm looking to get rid of these to go off to a better home so I can acquire more stuff that I am into collecting. So hopefully I could sell some of this, these two French hats to get another uh, more French stuff for a um, uniform that I'm trying to put together. So uh, on the chasseurs. So this would be, uh, go. hope these go to a good home. I'm willing to sell them for quite cheap actually for what they would uh, what you normally see them going for on eBay and other secondary hand websites these are in very very good condition so but excellent piece of gear and if you have any experience with these uh, or know of any other countries that used the uh, kepi like this that would be very very interesting to know or if I miss something and there is another country who adopted this style of kepi the coffee can style of kepi I would very much like to know that as well in the comments. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, a couple rifles that I just bought are coming into the gun store today. So uh, those are going to be exclusive content. Um, if you guys would like to, yeah, I'll probably do some short videos on them, like very, very short, like sneak peeks type of stuff for everybody. But if you want to see the full video, and they're going to be long in-depth videos because I know a ton of history on these two rifles. That is going to be exclusive content. There is a donations page on the link uh, on the about page of my channel, or if you click on my little icon uh, up along the banner in the, the right corner of the banner, there is a donations tab. You could click that, send me some money, leave your email in the description, and I will be more than happy to send you a link to these exclusive videos, which will be coming out here probably in the next week or so, given work time, obviously. Uh, and all that money goes to supporting the channel and some upcoming projects. So it's very, very greatly, greatly appreciated for you guys to do that because the more money I get, the more I could do for the channel, which ultimately means more for you guys. So it's not like I'm going out to buy alcohol with this stuff or anything like that. But I could really use a drink too. So if you, if you, if you do donate and you do say I can use it for drinks, um, I'll, I might use it for drinks. But. <laughs> That's only if you want to be a comedian. So, but thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really enjoyed the support that you guys have given me. We're getting up near 2,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. I couldn't have done it without you guys. I love he seeing you guys in the comments. Um, I like when you guys, you know, share the videos and talk about your family history, if any of you guys have this stuff in, in the comments. I, I love to see stuff like that. And um, you guys that 
that uh, do chime in and you know correct me to help make the channel better and all that other stuff in the comments I, I very much appreciate that as well because this channel is all about learning so and I can help teach you guys more the more you help me out like that so thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video bye